Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the idea of Dyson spheres, the hypothetical superstructures that some astronomers believe could be built by advanced civilizations out there in order to harvest as much energy from the star as possible. And though naturally this is still a super hypothetical proposition with practically no evidence as of today, right now we're going to discuss two studies that just came out that actually do find something somewhat intriguing. Uh, surprisingly, there are stars out there that potentially show signs of something unusual, and we're not sure what. And so let's discuss this idea, but I guess first, in case you've never heard of Dyson spheres, what are they? Well, this is actually mostly an idea that stems from a relatively old science fiction story, Star Maker, the book that explores the future of humanity for two billion years with one of the propositions in the book being an unusual structure that would harvest the energy of the star directly. But even though this started as science fiction, a couple of decades later, in the 1960s, this was later explored by the British physicist James Dyson, who essentially wanted to explore this from a more scientific perspective. Wait, nope, that's the wrong guy. That's James Dyson who invented the vacuum cleaner. I constantly make this mistake. Not this guy at all. It was not the vacuum cleaner physicist guy, it was the mathematician and the theoretical physicist British guy, Freeman Dyson. And so back in the 60s, he started to think about this scientifically and mathematically, and basically imagined some kind of a spacefaring civilization that would be able to harvest the star's resources directly by building individual structures orbiting the star. Technically we would call this a Dyson Swarm, not a Dyson Sphere, because only a swarm would stay in a stable orbit with the sphere potentially breaking apart. All of this was explored in his 1960 paper Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation. The study you can find in the description below. And though he didn't actually discuss how such a structure would be constructed, he talked about one thing. How such a structure could be detected. He basically proposed that such a megastructure is going to re-radiate a lot of energy in specific frequencies of infrared light unusual for the star of the spectral type. Or in other words, if we actually see a G-type star like our Sun emitting extra energy in the infrared light, especially appearing different from any elements known inside the star, it could potentially mean that this is maybe a megastructure and not actually coming from around the star itself. And one of the most famous recent examples of such a detection was of course the famous Tabby star, KIC 8462852. Here this was a detection of extra infrared energy, along with an unusual dimming of 22% that was assumed to be maybe from some kind of a megastructure. Basically something covering the star. But further analysis and very thorough investigations in the last 9 years established that this is unlikely to be the case. A lot of the emissions here and the dimming itself appears to be very similar to a typical dust cloud. And so essentially some kind of a dust ring or some kind of a dust cloud in front of a star potentially explains both the infrared emissions and the unusual dimming. Mostly because the dust in this case would be glowing in infrared light. And so that's basically how these unusual superstructures are generally searched for today, by looking at infrared emissions that should not be there making this a very unique techno signature. But now we have a really intriguing pair of studies that basically analyzed millions of stars using different surveys, making some intriguing discoveries, with both studies conducted by two separate teams and actually using slightly different surveys and slightly different data. But based on a lot of really good data from, for example, Gaia telescope that tracks the motion of stars, and also slightly older surveys such as 2MASS and the surveys by the WISE telescope that provides infrared data. And so by combining the motion of stars with the infrared data and by analyzing approximately 5 million stars, both teams discovered very strange candidates. For example, in that first paper, they discovered 7 red dwarfs within approximately 900 light years of planet Earth and here we're talking about very common stars in the galaxy, and basically stars that usually contain terrestrial planets, that appear to be up to 60 times brighter in the infrared light compared to what they should be. And 60 times brighter is no joke. And if this excess of brightness is caused by some kind of a superstructure, here the analysis suggests a temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius, to some extent consistent with various predictions about Dyson swarms and Dyson spheres. But because the stars themselves are visible, this is definitely not a Dyson sphere at all, 
and has to be a Dyson Swarm that can only hide up to about 16% of the entire star. So here this would suggest some kind of a orbiting superstructure consisting of a large amount of satellites. And then the second team focused on slightly different stars and conducted a different analysis, discovering 53 candidates, including a lot of larger stars, some even similar to our Sun. But here the distance was up to 6500 light years, so many of these objects were much farther away. And some of these candidates were basically the same. And so does this mean we actually found signs of Dyson spheres? Well, just like with the Tabby star, not really. Unfortunately, this is just a super preliminary result and is more likely to be actually the case for something strange going on with these stars as opposed to being a superstructure. And no, this is not me being super skeptical, these are the actual conclusions from both papers. Every single one of these discoveries would have to be followed up with telescopes like the James Webb, but so far all of them do have natural explanations. For example, they could just contain some kind of a hot planetary disk that produces extra emissions. And though most of the stars discovered here are kind of old for this and should not contain these disks, it is still quite possible. Likewise, it is quite possible that some of these stars are actually aligned with a separate object in the same vicinity, for example a distant galaxy, that's technically extremely close to the star and is responsible for this extra infrared light. So basically there could be something photobombing the star and it just we're not seeing what just yet. Also, maybe some of these stars have this, possibly showing signs of major collisions in the star system that do actually produce extra heat. We've actually discussed one of these detections very recently in one of the videos in the description. Or maybe these stars are just very unusual for other reasons. Maybe they have some kind of an unusual reaction on the surface, or maybe they combine with something like a planet that change their overall brightness and their infrared emissions. Either way though, right now the conclusion is that it's very likely natural and not extraterrestrial intelligence. Nevertheless though, this is definitely going to require additional studies and hopefully observations with the James Webb and potentially SETI telescopes. Every one of these 50-something stars is still obviously a candidate for some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence and still has to be explored in order to explain what's going on there. I mean, for all we know, maybe someone's actually trying to move the star by using what's known as a Shkadov thruster or basically a bunch of satellites around the star in just the right position that forces the star to create a momentum moving the entire star system somewhere else. But yeah, chances of that are possibly um, not very high. Either way though, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional observations and possibly something else is discovered, because as of I guess 2024, these are some of the most exciting candidates for potential signs of some kind of a techno signature somewhere out there. Definitely great discoveries, but it'll probably take months to see what's up. Right now unfortunately this is very preliminary and there's really nothing else to add. We basically have a bunch of stars that are slightly hotter or produce extra infrared light compared to what we expected. Either way, if this is natural or not, it's going to lead to some incredible new discoveries. And so once we have additional information, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.